Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope everyone is having a good, good day. Uh, <laughs> I saw this post on Instagram. Uh, you know, of course, I'm doing real estate now, so I follow different real estate agents, and um, they post different things on their on their pages, Instagram pages that's not necessarily related to real estate. Uh, so there's one particular guy. He posted <clears throat> a quote out of a book called 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. <clears throat> and this this Robert Greene guy, he has um, he has a few books. The Art of War, 48 Laws of Power. The Namos who they love these books, of course, because it outlines basically how to elevate yourself over people, how to stay safe, how to manipulate, and things like that, which ultimately shows that that's a part of the culture. So this one particular post that I saw earlier was, don't appear to be too perfect. One of the ways that I started to help myself and get on a better journey of um, purifying, of course, purifying myself, of course, in light of Kitab and Sunnah, was by looking at the opposite, which is, what's the opposite? Look at the people who you come from, which if you're a convert and you come from the West, you look intently at them and you'll find the poisons within because you were raised with these people. And um, most people are not good, their own, uh, they're not a the good judge of their own character. You won't see your own flaws, okay? Especially if you go inside of a religious community and now you've turned a new leaf and you're, you're living a different life. You're not aware of the poisons that you brought with you. And no one in the community is really going to highlight it because they are also unaware. So a part of this journey, and this is a part of Hydra, not just physical hijra, but hijra of the soul, hijra of the mind, is that you have to know yourself. Know where you come from. Study you. The Arab, they study themselves. They know, they still speak of the darkness that they were in before Islam. And, they, and I hear their lament, praising Allah for delivering the Arab from the state that they were in. So they never forgot where they came from. They never forgot the state that they were in. And I don't see people who enter into the fold of Islam looking at their past as much other besides the you know the obvious things drinking smoking you know fornication messing around with women things like that uh going to clubs you know all of those different types of vices but what about the what about the the mentality the principles no one looks at those things and that's why many people are having a very difficult time Uh, fixing themselves because there's co there are conflicting principles and ideas in our brains so this guy uh, you know Robert Green he says don't appear to be too perfect so when you don't when you don't appear to be too perfect you please people and you eradicate potential enemies because this is what he's saying and uh, be appearing to be too perfect create silent enemies people basically want to tear you down and don't we see that a lot especially like I said being a convert in a community of converts I noticed that people don't actually like someone who's trying to strive and be religious they don't they comment things like uh, even if you're not preaching to them or reminding them they, they surely don't like to be reminded but even you yourself, if you take certain position and certain stances, like, well, I don't participate in this, or I don't have this, I don't do that. For example, television. I don't have a television. Um, or I don't I don't go in certain areas or certain places. This is, this is what I want to do to stay away from fitna, or putting myself in fitna. Then you'll get statements like, oh, you're a super selfie. They start to criticize you. But why is that? It's because of these underlying principles. We have principles uh, from in Jahiliya, like, oh, you're a goody two-shoes. No one, the West, Western people don't like that. Why? 
that's reserved for individuals who are in high places like the church or now that you're Muslim you know the Imam you know if you're, if you're, if you're a religious uh, figurehead then perfection or flawlessness is for you it's not for the common everyday person so that that concept of trying to be righteous in reality as a as a common person or everyday individual is foreign to westerners it's 100 foreign it's not something they're accustomed to it's not something that they like so these are things you should be aware of and be aware of coming from the west um and I would say the Kufar, they study, they study their enemy. They study us. So we should also study them so that we can get rid of the characteristics that we have from them. And that's just reality. People don't want to, they don't want to um, believe that, that, that that's the case, that they have those characteristics or they're carrying them or it's, it's unidentified. We have different struggles and behaviors that we exhibit and no one knows where it comes from. So you have to look into, look into your past, look into the people that you come from, look into your culture. Of course you have to know your belief first to be able to know how to, how to combat, what's the opposite of it, how to fix. But you can't just look at the flaws and then don't know how to fix it. We've been given the remedy of how to fix those things. So um, yeah, that's that's a, that's something that I wanted to share, just to bring a little awareness to uh, you know the condition. <clears throat> we have we have a condition. I'm thinking about. I, know, I was thinking about starting a podcast, but that's going to take too much time. I, I have a lot of going on. Um, but yeah, that's just something that I wanted to uh, to bring to your attention. Inshallah, fair. I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And please leave your comments down below. I would love to hear what any of you have to say about it. Um, <laughs> and remember that Hydra mandate sacrifice. My salam.